Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred on here for another edition of Spurverts this time with Squawkers, Greg Stobart once again. How are you, Greg? Very good, thanks, Barnaby. Becoming a regular on Spurverts, <laughs> yeah. Greg. We love you here. We want you back. And of course, it's transfer deadline day tomorrow, so lots to talk about, about that. But let me take you through what we will be talking about. We'll start off with the Liverpool game, what the performances we like, how we felt about that. Then we'll talk about Nasser Chadley, obviously went off to West Brom yesterday for their club record fee. Uh, who else is to follow him? Is Mason going to leave? Is Sonny going to leave? Is Tom Carroll even potentially going to leave? Then we're going to talk about potential signings. Isco, Zahar, and Kudu, etc. Uh, then we have actually made a signing for the under-18 squad, a Colombian youth international. And finally, we're going to talk about Pau Lopez, the goalkeeper who we may be getting in, even though we have two fantastic goalkeepers. But let's start, Greg, with the Liverpool game. You were there. Yep. Uh, overall thoughts? wasn't very encouraging really was mm -hmm. it I think firstly you have to praise the character of the team I know it's almost become a bit of a cliche but it's the kind of game Spurs would have lost yep. a few years ago mm -hmm. isn't it absolutely first half I thought Liverpool looked so good and yep. we looked so bad yeah Mane in particular the pace in behind you, as a Spurs fan you start pining for that yeah. kind of pace and it was as well. scary it was scary it seemed yeah. inevitable that they were going to score and then they did um is it just as I would say, and I've been talking about Liverpool a bit, I think Liverpool under Klopp, now that he's had his pre-season and got the squad he wants, will be really strong. But for them, it's about how will they play against teams where they're 11 behind the ball rather than against teams like us. You know, they went to Arsenal on the first day and won. Last season, they won at Man City. Chelsea. They, yeah. At Chelsea. They, they can do it against teams who come at them, but they, they struggle... Um, when teams kind of stack up their defence against them to the point where when I was watching I said to my mate I think we should just be playing really defensively and he was like no we're playing at Wild Lane you never do that you know how does that work yeah you're right Liverpool is suited to the counter attack the points they're going to drop is going to be West Brom Burnley Hull mm. those kind of games and Spurs gave them Pochettino said in his press conference before the game didn't he Liverpool are going to counter attack yeah. and that's where they were hurting Tottenham for Spurs, it just looks like they're off the pace, doesn't it? Yeah, a little bit. It's, they're still, you know, the Euros guys, Harry Kane, Deli Ali, look off the pace. Christian Eriksen, I don't know what's going on mm -hmm. with him at the moment. Yeah. And you kind of hope that because the team is so settled, we spent the whole summer saying, oh, Spurs don't need to do much in the transfer market because they've got this settled starting yeah. 11 and everyone else is messing around, they're doing all this, that and the other. And you kind of hope that they would hit the ground running and use some momentum and yeah. use the fact that they all know each other. But they're not playing anything like they were at the end of last season and... Well, maybe they need to sign someone. Maybe they just need a couple more weeks training, to be yeah. honest. Because I think the season started too early for them. Yeah, quite possibly. And let's not forget that the last few games of last season were not that great. Um, yeah, you're right. It hasn't seemed to quite click yet. Let's just mention Ericsson a bit more. Now, obviously, lots of rumour going around that he's about to sign his four or five year deal. Do you think, as a footballer, that contract negotiation would be could be on his mind and that's why because it's even stuff like his touch and his passing is it the stuff that is instinctively easy for him I think uh, has yeah. gone awry a little bit well firstly I'd say I've always thought he's a little bit of a streaky player mm -hmm. he has two or three hot months maybe two or three months where he's not quite fully at his game certainly if mentally you're a few percent off at this level yeah. it can show whether it's fitness whether it's mentally and I think that's probably what's happening I think as soon as the transfer window's shut you're going to see Spurs push everything towards getting all these contracts sorted and Ericsson will probably be the first one okay. and then you would hope that he'd come back to form afterwards I mean you look at we talked about Dembele off camera and we didn't mention he's the one they're really missing yeah. at the moment isn't yeah. he but yeah. he signed his new contract and then just went from strength to strength last season yeah. and hopefully something similar will happen with Ericsson yeah absolutely and uh, absolutely and to to make that relevant to the Liverpool game I think personally uh, and I mentioned it yesterday in the five things uh, Dembele against the high press is the key player in our formation because as they all mention when they talk about five sides in training and stuff you cannot get the ball off Moussa Dembele and Liverpool were winning all of those balls where we're trying to play it out and if we'd had him I think it, it would have been a better option I thought Toby Alderweireld played very well as well he kind of kept us in it a lot let's talk a little bit about that Wanyama Dyer you know pair they seem to both be so deep that a lot of the time if we're playing a direct ball to try and counteract that press Matip, the centre-back, or the Liverpool defenders were nodding it out, and it was going straight to Liverpool players both times because I felt like they were both kind of playing the same position. Yeah, and I think we spoke about this before the start of the season yeah. as well, and it's looking more and more like it should be one or the other. Mm -hmm. They have similar roles. They're the defensive midfielders. You have Dyer and, or, or Wanyama, and then you have Dembele or Harry, Harry Winks. Winks or Deli Ali if you want yeah. to drop him a little bit yeah. deeper. But I think Dyer and Wanyama together, firstly, like you said, in terms of that... Um, the middle third kind of not quite at the ball they seem to be yeah. a couple of yards off mm. and secondly on the ball Wanyama 
he's been great. I think he's mm -hmm. shown that he's a really useful player and something Spurs could have done with at the end of last season. Mm -hmm. But he's not a ball player. No, he's not. And I think Spurs are missing. Like you say, you talk about Dembele, that drive, that drop of the shoulder, and he takes two or three players yeah, out of does, the game. Yeah. And there's no one at Spurs who can really do that to break the lines at the moment. Yeah, and also important to remember, you know, even though that we're talking about those little moments, those little moments, uh, you know, breed pressure, and defenders will drop deeper because they're feeling that pressure. So we're missing a lot of that. One more game without Dembele playing Stoke away next. Obviously, we did them four 0 there last. Last year, I don't think necessarily we'll do that, but they are bottom of the league at the moment. They've had a bad start. I imagine Hughes will be in the transfer market tomorrow trying to do something about it. So hopefully we can take advantage of a bit of uh, a tough start for them. Let's talk about uh, another player who came in with Ericsson from that Gareth Bale money. Nasser Chadley went to West Brom yesterday. Mauricio Pochettino made it clear early on this preseason he wasn't really in his plans. Um, the thing for me, I don't know if you agree, uh, Nasser Chadley, you know, obviously got his 10 goals a couple of seasons ago when he was starting every week, but as a bench player coming on to affect the game, he rarely, I felt, uh, changed it that much. The only time I can think where he got a goal, really, was Palace away when we were already 2-1 up last season. So do you think that's the reason why Poch was happy to let him go? I think so. You're right. He had a good spell January, February, start of the year, scored a few in the FA Cup, scored a hat-trick in the FA Cup mm -hmm. as well, didn't he? But you're right. He didn't really come on and change games, and that's what you want. You want an impact player to come and change yeah. something which... Son maybe can do, and Kudu when he arrives, maybe he could do that. He if and when. He needs rhythm. I mean, Chadley was a weird player because I've always got time for someone who scores goals. Me too, yeah. Because after Harry Kane, look, certainly last season, he was the one you would look to to yep. score goals, really, because there's no natural goal scorers. Deli Ali, of course. Yeah, yeah. But um, I've always got time for someone who scores goals, but it was, what else is he doing? Yeah. And there wasn't enough in general play, really. You'd look, you're always waiting for him to take on a fullback or do something yeah. a bit different, and it never really happened. You know, you think about a couple of great performances, Chelsea at home mm -hmm. in the 5-3, he was absolutely fantastic. But I can understand letting Chadley go. He's barely going to get any minutes. He wants to play for his national team as well. He's lost his place yes, in the Belgian right, squad yeah. as well. It's good money for a player who's not yeah, playing. We got, we got him for seven million. We got then uh, we bought him for seven million. We sold him for thirteen million. I know it's a different it's a different market because of the um, the TV money, but that's still a great deal, isn't it? You know, we got yeah. two three years out of him and then sell him for thirteen million. I think it makes complete sense. And a lot of people saying, "Oh, it's leaving the squad thin," but mm. really, how much was Nasser Chadley going to play for yeah. Tottenham this season? Interesting to me though is that it just shows that the Berahino thing is bang off the table because you know they're dealing with West Brom again happily. No more aggro between Jeremy Peace and Daniel Levy, obviously, but Berahino, one year left on his deal. I still think, is it just now an attitude thing? Pochettino's like, well, he's, he's caused a problem, so I wouldn't want him. Yeah, and West Brom has still been turning down big offers from Berahino. Yeah, I think like Stoke and million. Palace, more than 20 million. And Spurs, I think, they would like to think at least that they moved on to slightly bigger and better things yeah. than Berahino, and they're not going to go anywhere near that price. Mm. And the attitude, of course, would put you off. Could things last minute change tomorrow? Not, no. with, not with Berahino, <laughs> maybe with a couple of others. <laughs> OK, uh, let's talk about some other players who might be following Nasser out the door. Rumours of Ryan Mason now been in talks with Hull. Is that right that a fee was agreed between Hull and Spurs? Yeah, Hull, Hull and Sunderland are the two. I think he's more likely to end up at Hull. OK. So it's Tuesday today. As of Tuesday morning, it sounds like Hull are the more likely option for okay. Ryan Mason. Eight million, eight million pound deal, forty thousand pounds a week. Good deal for for everyone. And that's really. presumably a lot more than he's on at Spurs. Is he on what twenty twenty five? Yeah, he's on. Like he's that? on less than that. So pay rise for him. Gets to play every week. Join some old Spurs boys over there at Hull as well. Do you think well. is it a move he wants to make? I feel like he's a Spurs boy and he's kind of it's not a sexy move, you know. He's been pushed out a little bit. Yeah. I think you would say. I think he he's realistic. You can see, see he's not playing at the start of the season. The obvious statement Pochettino made on Saturday by naming Harry Winks on the substitutes bench, yeah. I think. So it's pretty clear, even in pre-season, it was looking like Winks could, it might be the year that he would step up. So if he's not going to play, it's a good opportunity for him okay. to play Premier League football. And Hung Min Son, uh, this one seems a bit out of left field. Now, obviously, Sonny uh, had a good start, scored that great goal against Palace last season. Always had a few little niggly injuries, hasn't really been able to have a run in the side. Of course, he scored against Chelsea away when we went 2-0 up. Back end, he was kind of playing up front then yeah. almost, um, but doesn't seem like he's going to break that kind of Lamella, Deli Alli, um, Ericsson axis. And Wolfsburg have supposedly come in with a bid. Now, what do you think about this one? Well, firstly, I'll say this on the plan was always give him the first season free because he's going to have to adapt to the mm -hmm. culture, to the Premier League, to Pochettino's style. He didn't have a pre season, he joined quite late on in yeah, the transfer window right. last year. So, when the rumours started earlier in the summer that Spurs were willing to sell Son, everyone at Tottenham said, no, we're quite happy with him. It'll take a crazy bid. You know, it could be a really big year for him with yeah. the full pre-season and stuff. The Olympics was a bit of a disappointment. Mm. Uh, 
personally, from reading between the lines, I think his agents agreed some sort of personal terms, agreed a deal with Wolfsburg. With Wolfsburg. Probably a pretty lucrative deal yeah. as well. The word from Tottenham is... Paid for by Volkswagen, presumably, yeah. and yeah. their emissions. And it looks like they might be selling Julian Draxler as well, which would make them an awful lot of money. Yeah, that's like 64 million he might be going... Yeah. Where's that to? Where's that? PSG. PSG so yeah. they, they might be loaded, Wolfsburg. But from Tottenham's point of view, the 30 million euro bid is not going to be enough. Okay. Spurs, Spurs are saying it would take a crazy offer. So well, if, they, if they sell Draxler tomorrow morning and then they're desperately looking for someone, then Levy will go, oh, all right, well, you give us 40 and you can Yeah, you're, you can talk, you're talking over £30 million pounds for, even, for Spurs to even wow. consider selling Son. And I think from a Spurs point of view, they even then, you only do it if you've got a replacement lined up because yeah, which if Son, you, you know, yeah. we're talking about leaving the squad thin. If Son goes, they really are looking a yeah. little bit thin. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and then just one more sale, perhaps. I've read a thing about Tom Carroll. Now, he seems to be, you know, behind Harry Winks as well. Derby rumoured to have come in for him, what do you think? Yeah, that's one that's been on the cards for a while. Derby have nicked some of Tottenham's recruitment staff okay. as well, so I think they're looking at Tom Carroll, make an awful lot of sense. He's for sale, he's only got a year left on his contract, he's not going to play an awful lot, I okay. think they'll take anything they can for All right, him. and why would recruitment staff leave Tottenham to go to Derby other than Cash Bicker? Bit of that, bit of uh, Spurs restructuring, maybe Paul Mitchell's left of course, sure. so people have got, you know, there's a lot of politics at any Big yep. football club with lots of staff, but yeah. Okay, so now into potential ins. We mentioned a few of them, but the first one that everyone I think is talking about a lot, and no doubt the title of this will be, is Isco, Real Madrid player, diminutive central midfielder slash attacking midfielder. Um, looks like he's not really in Zidane's plans, uh, but you think the latest news is less likely than likely? I'd say very unlikely. Okay. I'd go that far. They're definitely, definitely, they've asked the question. Yeah. It's a little bit, it smacks of the Van der Vaart 2010, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Late deal, Real Madrid, they've got a bloated squad, they've got Isco and James Rodriguez yeah. not involved, sitting on the bench. I suppose they've sensed an opportunity for a loan deal, or a loan to permanent kind of deal. They've asked the question, but the word at the moment is Real Madrid aren't that bothered about losing him and he wants to stay and fight for his place. So okay. they might be able to force something over the line in the last hours, but at the moment that's looking very, very unlikely. Yeah, and uh, I hate to say it, but that sounds like the kind of deal that is more likely that a Woolwich would do at the last minute, whereas you know, they're giving all the big wages and like a um, Sanchez and uh, Ozil. So I yeah. wouldn't want that to happen. Okay, Wilfred Zaha. Now, this is one where Daniel Levy is trying to wind up another chairman. I think he's gone in <laughs> late. He's gone in late. Steve Parrish doesn't like it. Uh, I thought Pardew's uh, press conference last week where he was pretty honest about yeah. it said Wilfred came up to me and said, may I leave? <laughs> I'm just like, how did he think he would react? Um, but you've said to me uh, that we did put a bid in, but Palace are basically saying, do one. Yeah, I mean, as I said, it's 12, to 15, 12 rising to 15 was the offer. Wow. They've been thinking about a second offer, but I think they've got the message from Palace now. I think uh, Steve Parrish means it when he says yeah. Sahar's not for sale. If the Sun thing happened at a lot of money and we went in and went... 28, 30. Oh, yeah, it has to be. I suppose it's going to be 28 million for Wilfried Zaha because you're right, that's what it takes. I think yeah. they sold Balassi for more than 25. Mm. You're talking that kind of money, Spurs yeah. won't do it. Okay, and uh, we've mentioned him, but Nkudu now training with the club. The most bizarre situation <laughs> in football transfer history, as far as I'm concerned, but that will get over the line. <laughs> You'd hope so, wouldn't yeah, you? I you mean, we've been saying we've been, we've been saying that for four, four you, five, six you weeks. You think it's waiting for the the NG thing? It's dependent on the NG deal. Obviously, all sorts going on at Marseille. It is their end yep. holding it up now? Yep. It's been agreed. It'll happen. It'll happen finally tomorrow. But Marseille have been messing around. Okay, great. Uh, now we have signed this uh, Colombian youth international, Juan Pablo Gonzalez Velasco. Uh, I've been talking about him for years. What a <laughs> player, uh, Greg. Uh, he used to play for Brentford. Uh, interesting that you mentioned uh, some restructuring. Uh, this Kieran McKenna thing. Now, he was the manager of our under-18s yeah. and he's gone to Manchester United. Is that right? Yeah, he started this week at Man United. Okay. Which is a big disappointment because Spurs have been losing a lot of their youth team staff in the last couple of years. Right. Weird because, uh, well, obviously Man United can probably offer a lot of money, but also we got the academy that everyone raves about and stuff like that. You don't want to be losing staff, really. Well, a couple of years ago when Les Ferdinand and Chris Ramsey went to QPR, they nicked... Three or right. four, three or four youth team coaches. Right. The best they picked out the best ones as well. Right. So I think there's a bit of concern at Tottenham about some of the some of the staffing at the youth team level. I wouldn't be surprised if they try and make a move to bring bring someone in. Okay, I've, I'll tell you what. I've heard a whisper that they might even try and bring Chris Ramsey back. Okay, all right, interesting. What? Uh, well, he didn't. Yeah. Well, his his youth credentials and his coaching credentials are better than his management oh, credentials. Um, so this player, you know, how does it work when you're buying players just for the academy sides? 
Uh, he, he'd left Brentford, hadn't he, in the summer? Yeah. Uh, I Basically, I've never heard of him, so just tell me anything you know. I don't know anything about him either. Uh, Spurs have their own specialist scouting department now for uh, under-18s, basically, right. youth team. Um, That's how they got Shiloh Tracy from Ebbsfleet and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, they've got a scouting system and they've got their own budget, especially for that kind of stuff. And it's the way it's working, actually. A lot of the big clubs are pinching players off each other. You know, yeah. Nia Kirby, really highly rated youngster who would have gone to Australia. He's gone to Chelsea at Tottenham. Right. So I think they're a little bit worried as well about losing some of the best players. And, you know, dog eat dog world. Yeah. If they're getting theirs pinched, they're going to start pinching <laughs> others me. as well. Yeah, it's horrible, horrible. OK, and finally, uh, to me, the most bizarre thing of all, even more than Nkudu, actually, is the Pau Lopez signing. Um, Spanish goalkeeper. He's Spanish, isn't he? Yeah. Yep. Spanish goalkeeper. We obviously have, uh, in my opinion, the two, the best kind of goalkeeper and reserve goalkeeper combo in the league. And Vorm has played well this season, played all the preseason. You uh, mentioned to me a little bit that you might think this is like one of Daniel Levy's classic player trading kind yeah. of situations where it might even end up with Vorm going elsewhere tomorrow. It would make sense. I mean, why do you need three, three, yeah. three goalkeepers? I mean, is Paul Lopez going to sign for Spurs and then not even be on the bench? Yeah. Is Michel Vorm going to be happy to not even be involved yeah. in a matchday squad when he's had a blinder against Liverpool yeah. at the weekend? It does sound to me like a Levy classic. You know, get, get Paul Lopez in, loan to permanent, and then Sunderland come in tomorrow, desperately make a big bid for Michel Vorm and Spurs make a bit of money yeah. on a bit of bit of horse trading and it, I don't like that yeah. I don't like we thought this would be a quiet summer for Spurs yeah. and they wouldn't really be involved in the wheeler and dealing kind of stuff yeah. it's actually six years ago today by the way that Harry Redknapp had his wheeler dealer rant is that right so, and we're wheeling and dealing still so yeah that's funny <laughs> and he didn't like it <laughs> no. let's face it uh, and Lopez's pedigree I know that he uh, he stamped on Lionel Messi once yeah. he is rated I've read quite a lot about him um is there any worry we should have about Lloris's future, bringing in a kind of young keeper with a good pedigree? No, I think if Lloris goes, Spurs go big for you know a proven goalkeeper, yeah. a Premier League goalkeeper, probably Jack Joe Butler, Hart. Jack Joe Butler Hart. and Joe Hart. <laughs> Joe Hart, even yeah. you know next summer, you never know what the situation is going to yeah. be. I don't think he's coming in as a long-term number one. I just think he's he's coming in as a number two or three clearly yeah. and something weird's going on because it doesn't make an awful lot of very sense very bizarre guys let us know what you think of all that in the comments section below this has been this week's Spurs we'll be back next week but get into uh, into the comments let us know what you think you want to happen on transfer deadline day tomorrow Greg's going to be a very busy man we'll be trying to keep you updated don't forget to follow our Twitter and Facebook at Spurred on TV that's where it'll all be coming in and uh, most importantly come on you Spurs Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On. This is our regular Monday edition of Five Things We Learn. And of course, this week it's from the Tottenham Hotspur. One, Liverpool won game. Now, this one I couldn't be at.